Hello, this is Tom with Kirk Consulting, and I'm going to give a quick demonstration on how to create dimension types and dimension values in X3. So dimension type is the, uh, the group or a type of dimension, a department, a cost center, product line, that type of um, um, grouping. And the dimension values would be all the values within one of those groupings. So it would be all my department codes within the department dimension or all my product line values within the product line dimension. So first of all in X3 let's create a new product or I'm sorry a new dimension type. So to do that we go to setup organizational structure dimension types and there's a bunch of them out there already in X3 about 20 different ones that come out of the box and we typically uh, add more for for someone's uses. So here we have a bunch cost centers, contracts, departments, etc, etc. Now one thing to note is you can have as many dimension types as you want in X3, but only a maximum of nine can be included with a ledger or with a chart of accounts. So we have about 20 of them created. Only nine of these can be active on the chart of a, on, on one ledger. Now why do they let you create more than nine? Because you can have multiple ledgers in X3. You can have multiple companies within this folder. Each company could do a different use a different ledger and each ledger could include a different group of those nine dimension types. So that's why there's more than nine created here. But if we want to create a new dimension, I would just, or dimension type, I would click on new, I would give it the code, give it a description, short description, the column header. This is what the user is going to see during data entry on, on the screens on my um, on my um, <clears throat> journal entry, I would see the column header for that dimension would be Tom in this situation. So um, this is what the user is going to see. So you want to type in a meaningful abbreviation. You don't want to make it too long. And then here's where we can determine the type of that uh, format. So 10 numeric means it could be 10 numeric characters, numeric digits, no characters allowed. If I did 10C, that would make that 10 characters alphanumeric. I could use uh, anything from the alphabet or any number within that code. That would be the dimension value within this Tom dimension. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. We're just going to use our standard dimensions here. Um, department DEP. You can see that's a 10 character. The co column heading is department. One thing I'll note is automatic creation. That should almost always be turned off. So what automatic creation means is when someone's doing a journal entry, if they're entering a code in the department dimension field and they type a value that's not already existing, X3 will automatically or dynamically add that value to that dimension list. So people can be um, coding, creating new dimension values on the fly. Typically you don't want to do that. It, typically if they misspell something, you don't want to hit OK and then automatically add a misspelled dimension to your, to your setup. So typically you want to leave that automatic creation turned off. So that's how we create the dimension types. So that's step one. Step two is after we get our dimension types defined, we go into our organizational structure, into our ledgers, and then we determine what ledgers we want or what dimension types we want to use on that ledger. So let's go find the uh, North American uh, ledger here. So here's our North American training. You can see we have seven dimension types activated. So we have the seven dimensions uh, on our ledger right now. I can increase this if I want. If I created a new dimension type, I can come in here, then change this to eight. Field eight now becomes available, and I can choose what dimension I want to populate in that column or that spot on my ledger. I cancel that. So here's the active active dimensions in my ledger. So after we create our dimension type, add it to our ledger, then the third step is to actually create the dimension values. And to do that, I go into Common Data, GL Accounting Tables, and go into the Dimension window. Now this window is a little bit unique, and it's a little bit um, uh, tricky to use um, because there's this little link over here, or this little uh, button, Dimension Type. I have to do that. I click on that. I choose my dimension, like my department dimension and then it should list all my values in my left list if I have any. So in this situation I don't have any values there. Let's go choose cost center. Refresh. We don't have any cost center dimensions either. We try to find one with some uh, actual data. 
Uh, let's try that cost center. There we go. So here is all the values, all of my dimension values within my CCT, my cost center dimension. So my cost center dimension type, CCT, here's all the values. So when I'm entering a journal entry, when I get to my cost center type, I could choose all these values. So if I want to create a new one, I could just click on new. So here's my Tom cost center value. Tom cost center etc etc fill this in I could limit this to one company certain date ranges and so forth I'll go ahead and cancel that but then if I want to choose a different dimension and what's kind of tricky on the screen I should back up now if I go back into this dimension screen dimension value screen go back to common data accounting tables dimensions see it defaults to the last dimension type that I was in so next time I come here I go to cost center so I have to remember to go click on dimension type pop up my list and then change my dimension to another value then I would see all the dimensions within that uh, here's my market market dimension type and here's all the values within market type so that is how you create dimension types assign them to a ledger and then create the dimension values within one ledger so that is the end of this demonstration video today thanks for listening